So let's talk about that through the prism of the Democratic Democratic Party in this moment. There was a uh, right wing provocateur commentator who got called out on one of the new shows in the last week they were asked well what is woke right and of course they they couldn't they couldn't answer it so i'm gonna i'm gonna ask you that question is what is woke but in the context of what is it that people hate so much that they're turning and open to this authoritarian shtick that you're seeing come out to protect them in their eyes from this woke ideology, whatever it may or may not be, uh, which is never entirely clear. And, and I ask this because it goes to the very heart of the, of the political problem in the country, which is one of the two political parties has turned away from democracy. If we had 15 major political parties in the country, and one of them took a flyer on democracy, it's not a huge issue. But but when one out of two of them uh, <laughs> takes a flyer on it, it's a, it's an enormous problem. Then, then the other problem is, is the pro-democracy party is barely winning against the autocratic party, which, which, which should trigger some self-reflection, which is we're, we're losing to these people uh, including Marjorie Taylor Greene, because of why. And so so my question for you is to talk a little bit about the why, but, but also what needs to be said that's new and fresh to Americans that have lost total touch with the party of John Kennedy, of Harry Truman, of Franklin Roosevelt? I think the underlying thing is that the most of the people don't believe that the Democrats care about them. And why? And, well, going back to, you know, a few minutes ago, when we talked about what happened with NAFTA, what happened with um, the subprime mortgage. I mean, I'm not, I'm, you can't understate this, Steve. Like, we had factories where I'm from close up and move over the border in Mexico. We had workers that had to go down there and train the Mexican workers that were eventually going to take their jobs. You know, we saw the steel industry collapse. We saw, you know, what happened in, in many aspects of the auto industry and the suppliers to the auto industry. And in, 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 in some of it was automation too, but the reality is, that got pinned on the Democrats because it was the Democrats who passed NAFTA. Then the subprime mortgage and everything collapses and it was the Democrats who swept it under the rug. And so the average person is sitting there watching this saying, these people don't care about me. They care more about themselves. Now, right, wrong, and different. I'm just telling you what the average person, why Trump won Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Ohio, and Michigan in 2016. That is why they feel like we don't give a shit about them. And, and so then there was the whole idea of the emerging democratic majority, right? And it was going to be a multicultural uh, majority. And, and so then it, the, sh the shift became on how are we going to help minority groups, which I'm all for a thousand percent. Look at my voting record. I'm in a thousand percent, right? I voted for all of these bills, criminal justice reform, voting reform. I don't think it's an issue of policy. I think it's an issue of communication. And the fact that these rural areas, these working class areas that do have white people in them, we don't show up in. And so, you know, it's not just working class because I've, I've gotten into these arguments as I've campaigned over the, over the years with people saw so, uh, Tim Ryan's the white working class guy. And I keep saying, I'm the working class guy, white, black, brown, gay, straight, you're working, I'm for you. But what we've seen with Trump, and this is nuts, and this is what I tell Democrats, you've got to ask yourself this question. How does Trump do better with black voters in 2020 than he did in 2016? How does he do better with Latino voters in 2020 than he did in 2016? 
It's the working, it's that it's it's the fact that working people don't see us as for them. And that is the underlying problem. So the woke stuff is kind of like secondary. Like, yeah, you're for the woke stuff. What's that really mean? It means you're not for me, right? Even the, the black voters are saying you're for all the woke stuff, you're not for me, right? If you you gotta wrap your arms around coal miners, I mean I have a whole lot of them left, but those working class people that that think that the Democratic Party finds them repugnant and, and they think that the Democrats don't care about them and then the Democrats don't show up and confirm all of their greatest suspicions. That's the problem. And Biden was able to check that a little bit uh, because of his own personal story and background. But for most Democrats, it becomes very, very difficult. And the great smoke screen, of course, that prevents the ability to move on to that debate is the culture war. Yeah. Well, the culture war wins when there's not a robust economic message. I, I always argue, like, if you if those folks that we mentioned throughout this conversation, like if those people felt like the Democrats cared about them and the Democrats had a strong economic message in response to NAFTA and put people in prison, you know, for screwing up the economy and, and causing people to lose their, lose their homes. They were tough. They were hard. And then the soft, uh, the hard put them in jail. Bankers who screwed the economy up, they're going to jail and I'm going to bust their rear ends. Um, but I'm also going to help rebuild these communities, the soft. Um, if, if, if Democrats did that, you know, the culture wars wouldn't mean shit because no one would care. They'd be like, Roosevelt, he gave me my job, right? He, he, he saved my farm, right? He, he, he built the economy so that it worked for me, right? They called, they called Roosevelt a socialist too, Steve, right? He was a communist, right? He was worried about, he was worried about Huey Long, right? Because it was like, it's, they're moving towards socialism. And, and he won. Why did he win? He beat off the left and he beat off the right. I, I love, I mean, I could watch the Fallow speech a million times. There was the, the, you know, the deafness of his political skills, of course. But how was he able to do that? Because he was delivering results to average people. And when you ask my grandparents, you know, who were first generation Italian American, my grandfather was a steel worker, who the greatest president ever was. FDR got us out of the depression, won the war, changed our lives, right? So we didn't do that. And so culture wars play more so now because we've screwed this up and, and they tried that stuff with Roosevelt and slid right off. Them. 